All right, welcome back to the Moment Trump to Experience. We're also live here on Saturday, February 6, 2021. Our uh, guest is here is Miss o Monique O'Neill. She's the founder and CEO of Softly Mugged Incorporated. So, how you doing today, Miss Monique? I'm well, I'm well. How are you, Kay? I'm doing you? good. I'm good. I feel a bad right now. I got to have guests on my system. I had a rough morning this morning, but I'm here. I'm here, you know. So, uh, I'm going to read a little bit about yourself. Um, then go into in details about things I saw on social media. I want to talk about your journey, how they got to this point. Okay. Um, Monique is the founder of Softly What, with a single mission in mind to be dedicated to offering customers distinct, therapeutic, spa quality skin care products, aromatherapy blends, and restorative herbal healing. Her, her, our therapeutic products are constantly evolving based on customer skin care needs. We are a socially conscious company that conducts business with personal and professional integrity. The creator and CEO is a master herbalist and a woman therapist. Social yeah. Buzz products are created with sustainable organic ingredients geared towards individuals with skill, skin elements, alignments, and a focus on mental wellness. Very, very, um, so. <laughs> so I will talk about how I get some because I got some things going on in so, um, my hands, eczema. So I got, it's a very long life process. So. So basically, based on that perspective, mm. uh, besides that part of I'm gonna get more about how you get hand that, who is Monique O'Neill? I am first and foremost a child of the Most High God. Amen, you know amen. So He gets His praise and glory first and foremost, always. But I am a woman of the African diaspora who just so happens to have the lineage of medicine women and medicine men. So with that being said, yes, I'm a master herbalist. I'm a certified cosmetic chemist, a certified aromatherapist. And in a few months, I'll become a cognitive behavior therapist. So my focus is all on restorative herbal healing for individuals, period, but specifically honing in and focusing on the African diaspora. Wow, wonderful. So, so can you tell us how, what was your childhood like growing up? What was like your childhood growing up and what led you to Think about becoming a um, herbalist and things like that. So, what, I, I, like, what yes. did you get? So, as a child growing up, um, I'm going to touch base on my wins and my mm. challenges as being a child briefly. I am a native New Yorker from Brooklyn. Okay, okay. Brooklyn, Brooklyn, Brooklyn in the house, Brooklyn on. Brooklyn in the house. <laughs> And I was acting as a child. So I did Off-Broadway and On-Broadway and a little television. The makeup that they had and was using back in the late 80s, early 90s was really, really harsh to my little sensitive skin. So I broke out. Okay. And my mother calls my grandmother, saw that I had like this weird dermatitis thing going on my face, made a concoction in the kitchen and put it on my face. I did that every day for about seven days, mm. and then after that it never showed up again. Wow. But my passion and affinity toward botany and chemistry was always ingrained in me. I think I was like one of the only, I probably wasn't, but in my mind, I was one of the only little kids in New York City who had aspirations of having a farm mm. and a garden, right? And I am freaked out by insects. However, <laughs> however, I knew of the, the properties and the healing that was in the land. And as a result of that, my grandmother took me under her wing. My mother took me under her wing and really started teaching me about the herbal benefits and spiritual properties and healing properties of herbs and how, you know, the most high created thing to heal the nations and what that looks like from a biblical standpoint. In a scientific standpoint, and I did a lot of abstract things as a child that most people don't do. Camping, you know, that's not something that a lot of us in the African diaspora do. Don't do camping. And foraging, <laughs> right, foraging off the land for the food portion of it. So not bringing any food and really just living off the land. And these are some of the experiences that I had as a child that helped move me. Right. Okay. Right. So, 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 did you go to school for therapy? Like, you say that in college, it's like, what was that journey like? So, so I graduated high school at sixteen and started 16? taking courses. Wow. Yes. Um, I had a situation that happened. I initially wanted to go to school 
to be um, an electrical and computer engineer specializing in robotics. Mm. Um, at my early 20s, like around my, on my 21st birthday, I was drugged and raped um, by three wow. people. I have no cognitive um, remembrance of it, wow. but the subconscious. The remember the trauma. The the tra yes, the spiritual yeah. trauma with that. Yeah. So that totally took me off of my path of mm. specializing in robotics, and I did three internships at NASA. So with all of that, I had to find myself coming back to oh, myself. Right. I was uh, in a class of like 170, and I was the only female and the only <laughs> African American female there. So mm. I started, that really started my sort of herbal healing. That really started my focusing on mental wellness. That really started the process of wanting to heal our women and our men mm. going through that process and how it looked for me. It looked different from other people. And it was a divine situation that happened. I like hit a cabinet with essential oils and it broke. And that was like the epiphany. The most high is so beautiful and his ways of just enlightening us. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I was already a herbalist though before I went to Georgia Tech. So so, so 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 what is a herbalist? What is what is that? Oh, a herbalist is just a it's some it's a herbalist, well in the United States I have to be very clear okay. we're here. Um, we are not considered medical doctors or anything. It's an alternative path path uh, to healing the body and medicine in other nations of other worlds and even including Europe a herbalist is considered a doctor got, and you okay, have to you. go through a vigorous process knowing that this is something that I really had a passion for even though I was embarking on engineering I went to the Clayton College of Natural Health um, and did my studies there I have a degree in homeopathic and naturopathic sciences with a focus in specialization and concentration in herbalism. I did an eight year apprenticeship. Going eight, eight years? Eight years. Wow. Apprenticeship of just really getting acclimated with the herbs and the plants, really focusing on botany, really understanding the chemical properties and the science behind herbalism, dosing, what it looks like, healing our body in, in, in an energetic way looks different for each nation of people but specifically focusing on the acro genotype. Mm, wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, so, so you, so you're herbalist now. So what is a aromatherapist? Aromatherapist is a practitioner that uses essential oils to help guide and um, enhance your moods. Essential oils has uh, two properties, well, it has a multitude of properties, but two major properties. It's one called the olfactory and the olfactory and you those odiferous i'm sorry in the olfactory those molecules when you're, in, you're inhaling it get to your limbic system your limbic system is here i know some people say oh you know the third eye is here no your <laughs> hand is in the middle of your head where mm -hmm. the soft spot is of the crown so when you you're dealing with the baby and they're like oh don't touch there that's a soft spot mm -hmm. where the skull is still growing right in that center of your brain about maybe an inch and a half down is where the pineal gland is. So right here is where your emotions and desires are in the limbic system of the brain. And when you're inhaling essential oils and the olfactory and odiferous molecules come together, it can it can persuade your moods. Essential oils are very effective when you're dealing with spiritual trauma because that's one of my specializations. Okay. Especially now in 2021, mm -hmm. we've had the 2020 COVID stuff going on. This is a whole new normal for us, and a lot of people don't know how to navigate what's going on. All of their insecurities and mental illness, which is I like to call spiritual trauma mm -hmm. from a spiritual standpoint, is coming forth to the surface because we were forced to sit at home with ourselves. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us don't like to be, be home with right. ourselves. Selves. And I've said this. And I will continue to say it. You can't expect someone else to really fully love you until you, you really love fully yourself, love yourself. So. And the only way that that's going to happen is if you sit with yourself and deal with whatever traumas that you have going on. Right. So aromatherapy assists with that without having to take any type of pharmaceutical medications. You can mix a lavender and a cedar wood and a bergamot together to help keep you in a positive mood. It's not going to take away the feelings of the issues that you need to right. get resolved, but it will definitely take the edge off. 
where you can function throughout the day and start thinking more optimistically versus pessimistically? Well, so I got a question because I'm very intrigued by one therapy because I do a lot right now. Okay. Uh, so it's a pressure of not negative pressure, but pressure getting married. Um, mm-hmm. Them being a black man and being his only child and like going to transitioning from coming from only child's mindset and going to getting married to someone that's like that has brothers, sisters, nieces, and nephews, and godchildren. And I never was taught how to be a brother or uncle. You know what I mean? So. So, you say you do a rare affair and like that. Do you do sessions with, like, classes about, like, one-on-one, how to mix the things together? Oh, because absolutely. Because I feel like I need that class. And plus, also, I feel like, I think, do you do very big net for kids? Because I know our kids are going through that. Like, like maybe some of our youth to teach about one affair because they do stuff at home and, like, they can't focus at school. You know what I mean? Because of... Uh, like I said, they were tired of I'm tired of virtual learning. So, God, I know a lot of kids on YouTube and like a lot of them are tired of that mindset of just being home. Like, do you do something like that, or are you plan to offer something like that down the road? Oh, absolutely. So I do offer um, master classes for adults. However, I have catered during like I would say my philanthropic work helping children with navigating. This is something that my children I've noticed has changed a little bit in their behaviors and how they interacted right. um, with school. And it definitely was a slight learning curve for them. So I know that a lot of children in our community are really feeling the burdens of it. One, because of systematic right. white supremacy and what we have to deal with with the pressures, right, of the societal pressures. Mm-hmm. Two, we don't know what circumstances and situations these kids are living in when they are at home. You understand? So the neighborhood can be a toxic neighborhood uh, for mm-hmm. those those things. Mm-hmm. Or the home environment, right? The energy in the home can be toxic. And then you have to sit there. A lot of children use school as a way of getting away and escapism right. from their day-to-day lives. Right, but sometimes a lot of kids are not safe at home either. That's yeah. <laughs> so like a kid, I said, this is about a nine-year-old got a shot. Because she was doing homeschool, she got shot. Because, right. because the, the, my dad... Left it alone, you know. That some she got hit by a skip by a straight bunny, you know. So being oh, home, so like, so it's like your kids are not safe anywhere. So it's like, I, you know, I feel like I feel like what you're doing, and because um my fiance said it's gonna be a good date night. So right. so so I would love to learn about that because I want to like talk to you offline about how we incorporate that with my nonprofit because I want to do that because I think. A lot of my kids live with trauma right now. And I mm-hmm. think if we can get off from suffering for them, the parents, to help out. You know what I mean? Just to, to get some, try, try this, you know what I mean? Like, you know, that could, be, that could help shit kids change moves and mindsets, you know? Absolutely. So, because that's what I wanted to give you last year. That was my idea. And now it's like, you think about it. Because we ain't know that we be in COVID almost a year plus, almost a year now. You know what I mean? Right. People are dying left and right. You know what I mean? Like, not, I don't talk physically, but I, physically, physically, a lot of people die. But mentally, mostly, they're not there anymore. You know what I mean? Like, Absolutely. yeah, so because I feel like, I feel like our kids need this stuff. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I need it as a man. You know what I mean? Women need it too. You know what I mean? Because, like, they need some type to get their move because a lot of us are angry and stressed out. Mm-hmm. But we don't want to take it out of the person, but it's like, you don't want to, Pick out a person, and I feel like I have done a lot of traumas, a lot of things I had going up that really brought to the surface since I got with Beyonce. Um, it's, but it's not like it's kind of like I avoided it, like I kind of made somebody avoided it, but now I got to deal with this stuff because I don't want to get this in my marriage. So, Indeed. and then so now, now. It's a transition to that. Um, right. You was on a show, I think it was on a show, a podcast, you're talking about man trauma. Mm-hmm. And so, because I think that's a real topic for men, and that a lot of times our men don't address that. That is true. So, can you tell us what is man trauma? And I, what, I know. Can you tell us what you said that broadcast? Like, I want you know. So, so you good? Go. So, man trauma is oh, so the science behind man trauma. That we're going to talk about the spiritual. Okay. I always like to talk about the science and the spiritual together because. 
it is. The way that the Most High created this plane, this planet, Earth, it, it was science based and spiritual, right? The mm. spiritual being. But man trauma is passed through the sperm to the male child and the male egg. You know, the man carries the seed, wow. he carries the spark of life. So it's very important that men understand that women can pass on trauma to the baby, but mm. for specifically for the head of households, that trauma is passed through from male to male. Okay, so what it does is through epigenetics, specifically the marker in the Y chromosome is being altered. So the trauma that's for men is more of a personality type of trauma versus a physical mm. type of trauma. Okay. okay, so it's different from what women has have, have had going on. Um, male trauma can show up in various ways of like alexithymia. What's that? Alexithymia is a term of um, resorting back and pulling away from emotional behaviors, not being able to fully express yourself in these things. It's mm. a really big. It's, alexithymia has a lot to do with societal norms. Just like, okay, I gave an example before and I'll give an example today. When you're growing up in a household as a male, the females and males in your household would say, man up. Don't oh, be yeah. a punk. Right, right. Don't do this. Right. Don't do that. Don't cry. Don't cry. Mm -hmm. um, that's not what men do. You're supposed to do this. You're supposed to do that. That starts to trigger the trauma that was passed on through the sperm with epigenetics because it's a personality trait right. with alexithymia being mm. involved in that. So within the African diaspora, within our community, we have a lot of that going on. We have a lot of women raising men, being single parents, right? And not fully understanding what that really looks like to raise a male. We, we, we tend to base it on our experiences and, and other things of that nature and not sitting your son down and having those conversations with your son saying, okay, this is how I would like for you to move, right? Structurally. Okay. With school, with all of these things. But emotionally, if you have something going on, bring it to me. A lot of parents, and I'm not saying all parents, because I'm a parent, okay. but a lot of female parents want to coddle their children and push them off at the same time. So when you're dealing with a male child, it's important to let them know that they have a safe space to be open. Mm, okay, male yes. trauma and alexithymia has a lot to deal with men not being able to open up emotionally in relationships. And relationships does not always mean it's something that's intimate. Relations with anyone, your friends, your family, your co-workers, you understand your spiritual family mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. church. But specifically when we're talking about our intimate partners, we as women have to understand that being in this country, dealing with visual uh, propaganda that's played every day, you're mm -hmm. constantly hearing about someone losing their life what, yeah. to a violent act, mm -hmm. shooting, um, you know, stabbing, being, 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 being targets, being very targets, you know, yeah. execution. Yeah, we're, we're being executed by quote unquote authority figures, and we know what this is. We're talking about the police and things of that nature, mm, but, we're, but even within our own community, right? We still have a lot of healing and growth to do, it's a lot of self hate within our own yeah. community. Mm. Okay, so all of these images are being placed on TV. Then, with that being said. Here, here goes the entertainment industry. Everything is only sexualized. The men are, you know, this, that, that, B, this, H, that, 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 Diana's and all of this other stuff. Then in the industry, in the industry, it's women altering their bodies, their physical bodies, right? You talk about body dysmorphia. Physically altering their Plastic bodies. Plastic surgeries yes. and um, um, what's it called those um, injections. Injections. Yeah, like trying to fit in. I'm like, okay, yes. be, be what God made you. You know what I mean? Be Absolutely. A, because a lot of times people get plastic surgeries and, and surgeries, and injections, trying to fit in, trying to fit status, a fit a image that people want to see of them, but don't see for themselves. Right. And so and, I, and that's the problem. I, I see that a lot. You know, really the um. But uh, I see that on TV a lot, you know. So right. it's, it's yeah. sad. It's like it's sad because you want you you do it because you want to bend yourself, but it's also mm -hmm. you, you want to get attention in a negative way by someone because you want to feel good. 
But in the day, if so, you want someone to tell you that you look good, but instead of telling yourself, I feel good, I don't need this stuff, I can be myself, you know what right. I mean? So, that, what you just said of the man trauma and said, because I, I always had bad, like, like, I didn't have, I didn't know how to be friends with people back then. Because, like, growing up, like, I grew up in a single parent home, mm-hmm. my dad was murdered. Oh, I was sorry. three. So, for years, my family mistold what how my dad when he died. He 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 fought I thought he died in a car accident. He was killed by a drunk driver on his birthday. I was like, for years I had that story in my head. Then I found a real story he was murdered for no reason. So you know by another person I you know for cause he wanted to go watch my dad said no but then the guy just shot him and killed him. Mm. So so me then with that and plus growing up I didn't know how to be friends with people because every time I got close to someone, they left, they moved. Like, I remember I had this door, that's the neighbor, that's door that's to me. We would spend time with every single day. Um, we got really close, and out of the blue, one day, his mom told my mom that they moved from Virginia. And I remember the day, and I was shocked, like, no, it was a joke. And I remember the day he moved, we both were crying. We both were blessed tears because I never had someone that was close to me like that. You know, this, is a, this happened in fourth grade. And then the fifth grade, I had another neighbor that was my cousin. So we was close too. Me and my mom and her mom, we got along really great, you know. They had a sixth grade. He went to Alvesa. I went to um, Dobson. We did different school. We grew apart. We did, that friendship wasn't the same. So growing up, I didn't know how to be friends with people because I was so good attached, and then they would go apart or they would move. So I didn't know how to deal with how to talk to people, how to share my inmost thoughts with people because like I was very emotional, but I didn't know how to express my emotions. You know, I, plus I was going, I was going with speech therapy a lot. Um, like I, I, I know, I didn't know how to be social. I was scared because I had a speech problem, and I didn't know how to like, I didn't know how to express my feelings okay. to, to females. I would, I would, I would do poetry, write letters to them, put it. Get, uh, I, I know how to write, so I, I, I just wanted to like express myself, and that's why I know I was way anti-social. Cause I I, I ain't go out, I ain't go out movies like that you know I ain't do all that stuff in high school you know what I mean but when I got to college I started doing that more because I had to find myself right. and that we just said hit me because I'm doing that right now trying to deal with things as a man and trying to like deal with my mother and like things that my mom had the same thing she wasn't in social that much you know what I mean so I think I got that that trait. You know, so now me trying to express myself to people, especially my fiance, is one to do because I'm gonna live this for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. And like, and I'm free of much crying. I, I, sometimes I had late with my church. I told I don't talk to my church like that. You know what I mean? You know, you know, I do, I speak to them, I be cultural, but it's, I don't have those deep connections like I should. You know what I mean? Like other people should. You know what I mean? I kind of like say to myself, but I do. Recognize, you know what I mean? Like things I need to work on. It's, it's really a hard thing as a man, you know. And plus, like, I wanna, I don't wanna be that man that gets divorced. I don't wanna do that, you know what I mean? I wanna keep because I know my mom never got married. My grandma, my grandma was married. Okay. She got divorced, so I understand my mom didn't get married. So I know what happened detail was, but um, and then I saw my aunt got married and her husband passed away from cancer. Mm. So and then and, and then also dealing with um um like self esteem issues and uh, family issues because mm-hmm. my former two and wife wants to have kids. And uh, okay. and I, I kinda I want to have kids mm-hmm. but at the same time I'm hesitant because of what's going on in our community and our kids dying and, and bringing them to this world that's like it's not safe. I know I should be fearful, but it's like I, I do want to care. I don't want to have it right now. I mean, I, right. okay, I want to understand our marriage for. I want legacy first, and then make sure we straight all the way around spiritually, mentally, financially, emotionally. Mm-hmm. Be we are safe. We can talk to each other. We can focus on certain things, and then the kid comes along. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Because every kid is a big deal. Because you gotta make sure that that. That kid has best of both worlds, you know. Absolutely. And um and um it, it's and like I'm scared to have kids because I thank God that I don't have kids now because I I don't want to be a single parent. I didn't want that. that yeah. Yeah, you know, my mom dealt with that for all dealt with that for thirty nine years. 
You know, even though my mom's engaged, been with someone person for 30 years, you're still single. You never got married. That is true. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, so um, you know, so and um, and you know, and uh, I just I just want to do it right. I want to make make sure that I make sure we are her in a good place because oh, absolutely because I don't want to let my traumas interfere with her. You know what I mean? Like you mm-hmm. know, and I sometimes I do sometimes fear of talking to her sometimes because like it's not it's not her, it's just me. You know what I mean? So like so it's, it's like. I want to be in same space. I never had someone like her before. I, I was like, I'm a little best friend. You know what I mean? I got to talk to her. I got that experience like growing up because I had that, had that fourth grade, that fourth grade issue. <laughs> you know what I mean? So like, you know, that fourth grade issue. So I was like, me getting close to her is really new to me. And like, I got that experience in college and, I, you know, growing up. And sometimes like, you have friends you grew up with, they, but they the same level twenty years later. They don't grow; they were evolved. And I evolved a lot, so. And that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. The evolution. Yeah. Is and, very, and that's very why beautiful. I want to really connect with you, and maybe for a partnership because I feel like I need this, and also my kids, my just needs it too because Absolutely. I feel like that therapy is no joke. I, I, mm-hmm. I, I, I want to try it, you know, because I feel like I need to learn. I need to get rid of stuff. I can't get it overnight. But I want to like it's better. A yeah, and you have to be willing. And I mean, like, and, and, and I, sometimes I feel like I'm scared. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fail my fiance. I'm gonna fail. I'm gonna fail her. And see, there it is. So for you kings out there that are struggling with similar issues, mm-hmm. if you're out there and you're having to navigate the abandonment issue yeah. or the rejection issue or the feeling of I'm not worthy, right? Why is this happening to me? I don't want to mess it up. Issue. I want you to take a deep breath. Everything starts with breath. The most high molded Adam out of dirt on right. the ground. Right. And he didn't come to life until that spirit came into him, which was that breath of life from the most high. The most high breathed right. life into him. Sit down, take some deep breaths. You can just do an inhale for a four count, hold it for three count, release for four count. And do that for five minutes straight. A lot of us, especially in the African diaspora, we breathe very shallowly. Uh, can you test that to me, what you just said? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, can I, I put that to you. Yes. yes. A lot of us breathe very shallowly, and we need our blood to be oxygenated. Our brain needs oxygen to function. Mm. Okay, speaking of the spiritual aspects of it, start your day out every morning when you wake up, after you give your first, for your first fruits to the Most High, you can write a list in your head or physically of five to ten things, this small, that you're grateful for. And it can be as simple as, I, can, I have my motor skills and dexterity. I'm able to walk. I'm able to articulate myself. Really start putting yourself in a, in a place of being grad, grateful. Why? Because then you're going to allow yourself to be vulnerable with yourself. All of this is about exposure and being spiritually naked before yourself and before other people. And we have to get comfortable with being spiritually naked with ourselves. When we start to get comfortable with being spiritually naked with ourselves, then here comes the truth telling. What stories, what rhetoric, what narrative have you been telling yourself over and over and over in your head? Some of those things are naturally done because of our own spiritual issues that we have going on and also some of those things are negative spirits negative energies demons coming and whispering into your ear people have to remember you are not your mistakes those mistakes that we call our mistakes in our lives are to bring awareness spiritual awareness of something that we need to pay attention to and until we actually sit down and stop um focusing on the negative and really start doing that mind shift, shift shifting, mindset shifting. There we go. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. right, right. Um, then once that occurs, then we can go ahead and change our story. Mm. But right now, a lot of people are still operating as being victims. So I mm. am going to give you a PDF on your website that you can have, yep. a clickable link, and it's just a little checklist that I do, and it's just a personal assessment that's done with individuals that I work with, whether it's a group of us or not. I have a monthly session called Manology, and it's about how kings, where kings can be kings. 
And it's the only female in the place is me because I'm the one that's right. facilitating the course. But it's a safe space. It's a safe haven for men to come and really connect, really start talking about those issues. We're going to delve deep biblically and naturally on what type of regimen and routine that you can get ahead and start practicing daily practices for yourself. And for the queens out there that have men that's dealing with spiritual trauma, please be patient. Please. Mm. Okay, patience is a virtue and it's a feminine energy because in the Bible, the patience is always referred to as her. So please exude patience when you're dealing with your king and take that opportunity while he's doing his spiritual work, while he's working through his mindset shifting, while he's working through his little cognitive distortions, you're doing the same. Yes, yes. You have to not only focus on making sure the attention goes to him, we have to focus our attention on ourselves. So that's just a little bit tidbit for the queens because women are quick to point out what's wrong with other people but don't really with really really themselves. Yeah. With themselves. Ooh. Men are afforded the opportunity to compartmentalize. Right. Hence why they're emotionally sometimes not available for us. So mm. please queens out there, just please give your king just a little space so that he can deal with it, especially with being in our community with all of the spiritual trauma that has been passed down from the transatlantic slave trade mm -hmm. until now. We have a lot of cleaning up to do and a lot of things. But for the kings out there, yes, manology is a thing. Yes, once we, I have a free group, yes, it's going to be taking place at um, the John Graves Production Studios downtown off of 12th Street and South. Due to the COVID, it'll be limited space, of course. However, you can also go on to my uh, in my Facebook page and um, click or click a link in my bio on Instagram to join and submit. Now I have to do it's a private group, so you do have to you know get approved to get in. It's a safe space. It's not a place for shenanigans. It's not a place to belittle or demean. It's a place where you can come and actually get help. And in that group, we also talk about. How after the age of 30, men start to lose their testosterone, which also can affect them cognitively and their ability to perform their intimate duties. So there is things that we can do to change that. I wanted to give you in the community, because I know we may be coming up close on time, <laughs> four steps to finding your inner peace. Okay. One, like I said, operating out of gratitude, giving continual thanks to the most high for what it is that you have. Scripture talks about if you do well with a little, he'll give you more. Now I'm paraphrasing the scripture. That's up to you to find out specifically what he said. But if you are able to manage the small amount that he's giving you, why wouldn't he give you more? Be grateful for where it is. Whether you're living in a project, whether you're living in um, an urbanized area, whether you're living anywhere, be grateful. Because you could be living under a bridge. True. You could Very be true. homeless yep. in this place. Mm -hmm. You really could be having some serious things going on. So being able to have a roof over your head with electricity, with running water, with food, even if it's not the food that you want or the neighborhood that you're, you that you want to live in, just give the most high thanks and start praying. We need to start praying more as a community and really protecting our homes and blessing our homes. But operating out of gratitude. You know what I mean? Like I said, it could be for the basic, most basic gifts. Your job, having yeah. good relationships, um, your home, your clothing, your health, okay? Even the fact that you may have never had COVID or you survived, be grateful for that. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. this thing is out here and taking it. There is. There is. Okay? Then making sure that when you're, you're, you find yourself in a negative Nancy space, when you find yourself keep rehashing the day's woes or the week's woes or what grievances you may have in your mind, take a, take an opportunity to stop. Do something. When you feel like you're getting caught up in your head with the negative rhetoric, you can start exercising. Start reading a book. Take your mind off. You have to do something that's very drastic. It takes 21 days to make a new habit and it takes 21 days to break an old habit. You have to, when you're trying to break out of old patterns, replace it with positive ones. Because if not, then your brain is going to stay stuck on what it is known and what it has trained to be. The brain is a muscle. Right. And we have to train it, okay? 
to think differently. So making sure that you, when you're mentally getting off course, that you're shifting away, you're walking away, you're doing something to break that negative thought pattern to try to train your behaviors in a different way. And so you can start getting your mindset right mm -hmm. back on track. The third thing is being kind to others and yourself. We are very judgmental of ourselves. We are very judgmental of ourselves, and I'm going to say it again. We are very judgmental of ourselves. Why is that? Because a lot of us are seeking external validation. We're seeking achievements, and achievements in, in our lives are good, but that's external. We need to be focusing on our accomplishments, and our accomplishments are internal. So doing that internal work, being kind with yourself. When you're looking at yourself in the mirror, and you're like, you're not liking what you're seeing, instead of going down, oh, maybe I shouldn't have had that cheesecake, or those hot wings, or those grits, or that cornbread. I'm talking about food that I eat, y'all. Yeah, no wrong with that. Right? No wrong with that. Right? Or all of these things. Say, so, hmm. I love myself enough now to know that this is something that I have been neglecting and have not been paying attention to. So now I'm going to focus on just doing my, getting more steps in a day, right. right? And gradually building your discipline muscle so that you don't have to sweat. So try to get out of that, again, negative thought pattern with yourself. And then being kind to other people. You never know what somebody is going through and what they have. And we can't be as reactive all the time as we want to be reactive. When you see someone pouting or shouting or doing those things, be kind to them. Come to, have a sense of compassion and empathy for people. Even if your day is going off and know that whatever anybody is going through, that nine times out of ten it has nothing to do with you. So when somebody may have a little attitude and they're being attitudinal towards you, Smile and say, bless you. Mm. God bless you anyway. Still be kind because that's going to break their thought pattern. Like, wait, did they just bless me? Mm. <laughs> you know? And I was behaving this way. It's about shifting that mindset. So being kind to other people, it will benefit you. And it will also make you cognitive of how and careful of how you're moving, right, in your day-to-day -day life. And the fourth thing is get sleep, people. As black people, we don't get enough sleep. Some of us do suffer from sleeping too much, and that tends to go on a lackadaisical side if it's not a medical condition, mm. right? Getting in that rut of depression. But for most of us, we are attached to these things. You know, we're attached to what's going on outside, and we're not allowing our brain to rest. So 15 minutes before you actually put head to pillow, you should operate out of nothingness. No electronics, no television, no anything. If you're gonna listen to something, let it be your spiritual guidance. Let it be the word of the most high. You, you can listen to an audio book of the Bible, right? But allow yourself to process. Allow your brain to process all of what was going on throughout the day so that when you go to sleep, you can have a peaceful, restful sleep. And it, a lot of people, you know, they go, what's going on in Instagram? Okay, all right, go to sleep. As soon as they get up, what's going on? That's too much, <laughs> too much cerebral stimulation and things that doesn't matter. Right, right. It doesn't matter. Right. Now, we're not talking about for those who have businesses and things of that nature. Even within that, it still needs to be structure and a cut off and cut off and cut on time. But making sure that you're getting a peaceful rest is important. So, operating out of gratitude, being kind to yourself and others, okay? Making sure that um, you're shifting your mindset. When things tend to go wrong in your right. life, you're not repeating that negative rhetoric over and over and over again. Replace it with some positive thoughts and then get enough sleep. Another thing you all can do is start doing your I am affirmations in That's the mirror. Sure, yeah. In the mirror or record it. It's fine to get those audible, uh, downloadable apps where people are speaking affirmations, but it's nothing like you, you your hearing voice, your, your own voice. voice. Yes, subconsciously. Even when you're sleeping, you can play that. Speak life into yourself. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Time, yeah. And we fail to realize that we speak death over a lot of situations uncognitively every day of our lives. And we just have to be conscious of what we're speaking out because we are beings of energy. And the Most High made us that way. Hence why life and death is in the power of the tongue. tongue. Yeah. Right. So we have to be cognizant of what we're opening up our mouths and say. And not everything justifies a response. So, gentlemen, you're dealing with a woman who seems to be a little naggy. 
You don't have to jump, you hop right back and clap right back with words. Just sit there in silence. This is Tara, and she would probably really irritate it. But just sit there in silence, and then when she finished it now, are you done? <laughs> are you okay? But, but, and then say, you saying this made me feel, right? Versus you nag me all the time. Why you nag me? I'm going to get to it. Yes, I left my sock on the floor, but it was just the one time I left. Operate, digest, really try to hear what it is that she's saying, and don't take it as a direct jab, because I'm sure you may have done something that's irritated her, just like she does things, including that nagging situation mm -hmm. that's irritating you. So communication is key within our communities and dealing with relationships. But first thing is first, like you said, working on yourself and mm -hmm. learning some structures and having things in place to do. And operating out of gratitude is the first, one of the first things that you can do to start shifting your mindset. Wow. That was very powerful and very informative by you. So where people can find you at? So give them information about oh, what you're- Oh, sure. I am softly rugged everywhere. And that's S-O-F-T-L-Y-R-U-G-G-E-D on Instagram, Facebook, Periscope, and twits her, okay? You can go to my website, which is www.softlyrugged.com. You can go to the course slash workshop section, and all of those are on there. Please, again, check out this podcast website to make sure that you download the checklist yep. so that you can start your page, spiritual yep. healing, okay? And if you have any questions, leave comments below this on the thread. Um, you can hit Levon up on, you know, all his social media platforms, yes. Instagram and Facebook and likewise. Okay, hit me up if you have any questions. I am here to help. I've been doing restorative herbal healing for over 20 years. All right. I'm 41 years old. All right, 41. All right. Yeah, yeah, all, I've all been right. doing this for over all right, 41. <laughs> and I really want our community to heal. Yeah. And I really don't want our men to continue to die in silence spiritually. Mm. I want you all to be able to be vulnerable and know that it's okay and know that you're not being judged. So I appreciate you allowing me to yes. come on your show. Yes. I enjoyed it very much. And thank you for sharing soul energy with me. Yes, and thank you so much, Monique. For, it's, it's not going to be the last time you be a part of the show. We got right. to come back and plus we're going to talk offline about partnership because I feel like orientation probably need you to help up with the things we had planned for 2021. Right. So our kids and, and women and men. So uh, thank you for those who are watching online. Like, yes, um, I mean, on Facebook Live, Instagram Live, thank you for just your feedback, your comments. I hope you, I hope you share this video. I hope you watch it with someone that watches back, especially for those who have a man in their life mm -hmm. who are going through right now. Um, also, just watch it, just share it, because we need to heal together. We don't yeah. want, don't be a noted person that don't, don't share this information. We want this to go viral. We want this to be viable to our community, because in the day, it's about coming together as a positive village and healing one another, so we can be better for each other and for ourselves. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday. Be safe. Be mindful of the snow. Um, don't do too much. Don't have a super party tomorrow. <laughs> so, just be safe. Enjoy the rest of your day.